Okay, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Meaningful Monday. Very good to be with you all. I'm really excited about tonight's lesson on how to love yourself. It's actually a, almost like a follow-on of last month's Meaningful Monday. It doesn't mean you won't know what's going on if you only join tonight. That's fine. I'll explain to you what last month was about. But it is a good follow-on if you did watch last month. And if you didn't and would like to, it's recorded and on YouTube as well. So the purpose for tonight is just to raise some awareness on the importance of this very probably underestimated idea of loving ourselves. And sometimes when we say that, people say, yes, I know, that's obvious. However, we don't really pay attention at a deep level or really raise our awareness to what it really means to love ourselves. And if we did love ourselves fully, what would we be behaving like? How would we treat ourselves differently than what we are now? Because all of us can love ourselves more. All of us can raise our self-esteem. There's not a single person who can't, no matter who you are. So just to say again, um, the Meaningful Mondays are all recorded. They go onto my YouTube Silver Method channel just for people who potentially can't make tonight. I have some requests from people who want to watch the video. So I'm recording for them. And then, of course, anyone else who can benefit from this just like yourselves. So kicking off, I want to see with the banner on my screen there. Hold on. So just to review last time. So last time, the lesson, just to quickly touch on this on one slide. The lesson was the barriers that bind us because the barriers that bind us are things in our life that prevent everything that we want, all the things that we desire, that we really wish to, to be true for ourselves to actually flow into our lives. So we actually stop the manifestation of this good coming in our life when we have certain things that bind us, that what I call these barriers or the, or the top four. So many people can say, that they know in their lives what's wrong, they know what they don't want, but they're not always sure what are these hidden things that are holding them back from more prosperity, more love, more happiness. And these are these barriers that are called, that bind us. And this comes from Louise Hay, um, her wonderful book on um, the power within you. So these four things that bind us are self-criticism. Now I say self-criticism, I could just say criticism and you can assume it's criticism of others. But the truth is you would never come to a place of criticizing others if you never criticized yourself first. Not possible. So I'm put criticism there as a one word because it's all criticism. If we can catch ourselves criticizing others, it's just an awareness. It's a trigger for us. It's a red light for us because we need to be aware that if we're ever criticizing another, there is definitely some self-criticism going on. And this relates to self-love. So this is one of the things we need to know. Why are we coming to self-love? Where are we coming from? The second one is guilt. This is a really blind spot for many people because we don't really know half the time that we're feeling guilty. So I'll give you an example. If all of us were given a million dollars more in this year than what we, what we expected to receive, whether we worked for it or received it from somewhere, or however it was, if we weren't really very good with ourselves and discipline and self-esteem, we would either feel guilty for receiving all this money or we would quickly divest ourselves from it. I don't know if you know the statistic, but about 95 to 98% of all lottery winners divest themselves of their winnings within five years. This is a true statistic. Very few, one, like two to 5% hold on to that money. And it's not that they are bad people with money. It's that their paradigm, their conditioning is not used to being that wealthy. So we can feel guilty from having too much money. We can feel guilty from having too much love. We can feel like we don't deserve to be treated that well. We don't deserve to be looked after that well. We don't deserve to be maybe even in such good physical shape, whatever it may be, this guilt that is a blind spot, it often shows up at a deep subconscious level. Now, a good way also to recognize that in ourselves is to catch ourselves using guilt to 
I won't say manipulate people because that sounds really bad, but it is a way of manipulating people to try and get the outcomes we want when talking or negotiating or addressing people. Um, you know, you say things like, oh, if you loved me, you would do this or that. What is that kind of statement trying to do? Because you, you're saying, if you don't do what I say, then you don't love me. And so the person feels guilty if they don't do this. So if we do this and we catch ourselves doing this, it means we're doing this to ourselves. We ourselves are feeling guilty for being happy, being prosperous, being loved, being super fit, healthy, good looking. And the third one is fear. So fear shows up in very strange ways. Fear shows up as anger. So if you ever think how anger shows up in your life, it comes from a fear. And often, depending on how we're raised, we, we could be told or conditioned to feel guilty to express ourselves when we don't want, like something or don't want something to happen. So we suppress these feelings. We're afraid of speaking up. We're afraid of expressing ourselves. And all the suppression is a fear. I can't say what I feel. What will people think of me? I can't say what I want. What if they don't like that? I can't say that I don't want to do that. What if they dislike mm -hmm. me for that? That's fear. Now, what happens when we suppress these kind of feelings ongoing? We just develop resentment, which is the fourth one. And resentment is really, <laughs> the truth is, angry with ourselves. When we're resentful and we think it's about another, it's actually because we didn't do anything about the situation for so long that we finally resent that person. But everything that I'm talking about that's outside of us is actually reflection of what's inside of us. When we're angry with someone for, let's say, hurting us for years and years and years, and we think we're resentful now, towards them, the true resentment is a reflection of ourselves. We're actually angry with ourselves for, for putting up with the hurt for years and years and years. So I'm just mentioning that everything that we see on the outside world, criticizing others, other people making us feel guilty or fear or anger with someone is actually a reflection of ourselves. So this is important that we see it this way. And if I've gone too fast, I want you to stop me right now and help me explain one of these points again if they're not clear, because we do need to get this, that everything stems from us. No one does anything to us. And from that point, we can now move into the lesson on how to love ourselves, because when we love ourselves, we remove these barriers that bind us. When we love ourselves, we clear the pathway. These are like massive I don't even want to call them toll gates because they don't even open sometimes. They're like actual barriers in the road of our life path. And unless we love ourselves, there's no other way to actually catapult ourselves right over them towards allowing everything we want to flow into our lives. Lots and lots of love, lots and lots of happiness, inner peace and prosperity. I love talking about money because it's a reflection of the value we hold on ourselves. And if we learn to love ourselves and really focus on this lesson of tonight and think about prosperity going hand in hand with that, and you do increase your income, you know that you've changed your paradigm. If it doesn't change, you know that you still got further work to do. So I'm not crazy about money that is just for the sake of money, but I do like talking about money in this regard because if we do have financial goals, they are an excellent measurement of our inner work reflected outside just as money flowing towards us. So everything is a currency. It's an energy. Even money is an energy. That's why it flows. It's like a current that flows. It's called currency. So I'll stop here and say, are there any questions at this point before I continue? No? Okay. And by the way, if you want to see the previous Meaningful Monday, it's recorded on the YouTube channel. So let's just talk about these 10 steps. I'm going to give you guys 10 steps tonight. They, they are 10 steps to learn to love yourself. I love this little quote here by Charlie Chaplin. Quite a sad, sad person or sad man he was, if you know his autobiography. But he said this, As I began to love myself, I freed myself of anything that is no good for my health, food, people, things, situations, and everything that drew me down and away from myself. At first, I called this attitude 
a healthy egoism. Today, I know it is love of oneself. So it's very true that if you look at yourself and your life, your own health, the food we take in, the people in our lives and how they treat us, the things in our life that whether we like them or don't like them, all the situations and everything that happens to us is basically this reflection of the relationship we have with ourselves. Um, also, forgiveness is related to all of this because self-love definitely has this big element of self-forgiveness because from wherever we are today, we all are hard on ourselves. So forgiveness of self is the first thing. And when we start to practice this, and I've got some techniques, if you want to know, I can talk about at the end, um, certain meditations just to repeat every day to help forgive yourself. Then you actually let go. And when you do this, you'll really and truly feel like a weight is lifted off your shoulders. And once we get forgiveness as the starting point, we also kind of open the doorway in our lives for more self-love. Hello, Marie. Welcome. So I just want you to think that wherever you are, whoever you are, including myself, let's consider loving yourself as an adventure, like learning to fly. So it's going to be something that perhaps is new or different, but every single one of us at some level or other could do with more self-esteem. And when we don't love ourselves fully or unconditionally and we make loving ourselves conditional, what I mean is, oh, if I did that well, great, I'm happy with myself. Oh, I didn't do that so well. Ah, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot. That's what we call conditional self-love. If we love ourselves conditionally, well, then the truth is all the relationships that we're going to be involved in are going to be conditional loving relationships too. And we would never fully love someone else fully if we can't love ourselves fully. So every relationship in our lives is a reflection of what's going on inside. It's really never about the other person. It's always about us. You know, I, I, um, I learned to, uh, for me to learn this years ago, it took me a long time. I never quite understood the concept of everything in our life being a reflection of ourselves, but it really is. And the other thing is, there's a saying, you can't give away what you do not have. So how much can we really love another truly if we don't love ourselves first, truly? And you can be a better lover for someone else. And I'm not talking about lovers in your significant other. It could be that person, family, parents, children, siblings, um, relatives, friends, colleagues at work, everyone. The more we love ourselves, the more we can give and share that with with other people. Okay, so step one, which is on the screen at the moment, is stop criticizing yourself. So generally, we judge ourselves, I put the word unmercifully there, because that's probably, not overestimated, it's probably quite true. We are really hard on ourselves, all of us, including myself. We are tougher on ourselves, let's be honest, than anyone's on, tough on us. No one's as tough on us as we are. And we often um, do this without even real good justification. Now, um, what also happens, depending on what kind of home you came from or what kind of um, upbringing you came from, sometimes when there are dysfunctional homes, people need to really cope and they really need to look after themselves from a very young age. So what they tend to be is they tend to be super responsible. They tend to be super self-sufficient. And with that kind of personality, I'm just mentioning it, could often come with it a very strong sense of self-judgment. Um, and when things don't work out, the first person we look at is ourselves and say, oh, there must be something wrong with me. I must have done something wrong. So we need to really change that with being intentional. So when we keep judging ourselves unmercifully and calling ourselves bad names, like um, any negative self-talk, I'm stupid, I made a mistake, I'm so dumb, geez, that was useless of me to do that, or that was bad of me, all these things cancel, cancel. Um, what happens is we feel that we're not good enough. And the minute we run ourselves down, and we feel for that minute, even if it's not that long, that we're not good enough, what happens is we create all these manifestations. 
One is illness in our bodies when we're unwell. Another one is we procrastinate about the things we know will serve us better. We procrastinate on the things we know will bring us more money, more happiness, more love, whatever it is. We just stand in our own way. We actually like our own worst enemy because we just don't feel good about ourselves and we sabotage everything else around us. Or sometimes we mistreat our bodies. We just eat badly um, or we drink too much perhaps. Some people take drugs or even prescription medications because we feel so bad. We maybe produce a terrible headache, take too many headache tablets. All of this is not really healthy for our bodies. The next thing is let's not pretend that we are perfect. Let's just say that we are not striving for perfection. We're striving for progress. People who want to be perfect are going to find something wrong with themselves all the time. Loving yourself says, I love myself as I am. I'm good enough as I am. This is who I am and this is what God created and this is what I honor. We're not saying perfect because let's be honest, everybody's going to have something better than you and something worse than you. Everybody. There's some part of you physically, mentally, emotionally, however, that you are better than others on and that others are better than you on. So there's no such thing for us to say, I want to be perfect. What does that mean? Spiritually, you're already perfect. Your essence, your non-physical being is already perfect. We are just conditioned imperfectly in a physical body that also potentially is not perfect. But we are unique. Unique. And this is what we need to love and honor and not try to be like everyone else. Because when we're trying to be perfect, it means we're comparing ourselves to other people who want to be the same. I'm saying, no, no, look at yourself. What sets you apart? There's something different about each and every one of us. Let's find that quirky thing, strange thing, weird thing, loving thing, wonderful thing, beautiful thing, ugly thing, whatever it is, and discover your uniqueness that sets you apart and love yourself as you are. So the first one, stop criticizing yourself. And if you catch yourself doing it, use the cancel cancel technique so for anyone who doesn't know what that is it's a silver method technique the minute you say something negative about yourself say cancel cancel and just reframe with a positive affirmation and try to use better and better if you can in the answer <clears throat> so instead of saying i'm so dumb i forgot to do that just say i'm getting better and better at remembering to do whatever that thing was try and overwrite that the next one is stop scaring ourselves. So some things that we do, I don't know, not all of us, but sometimes we make mountains out of molehills. So we go to worst case scenario mode. Perhaps someone doesn't call you for a whole day or two. And you immediately decide, oh, we're totally unlovable. We're never going to have a relationship again. These people don't love us, whatever it may be. Or for example, at work, someone could make a remark and immediately we begin to think, oh dear, I'm going to be fired. That's what I'm saying when we make a mountain out of a molehill. We catastrophize, we dramatize, and it's actually a habit pattern. So if you know anyone who does this, or you know that you do it yourself, it's just an awareness that catastrophizing is a habit pattern which you can change. Looking for worst case scenario is a conditioned response. It's not just the way you are, it's just a conditioned response and that we can always change. The next thing, Let's try and create for ourselves a switch to image. Every time you scare yourself, oh, I didn't do that, I'm going to be fired, or I didn't do that, this is going to be a disaster. No. So cancel, cancel, and put an image in your mind that pleases you, anything. Like, just say to yourself, I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm going to think about, I don't know, choose whatever you like. Think about sunsets. I think about my kitty. Think about your favorite niece or nephew or child or grandchild, whatever it may be that pleases you. But get your mind off that thought because the longer you think a thought, the more you attract similar thoughts to it and you just give it more and more momentum. Once that momentum gets going, good luck trying to stop it. It's more and more difficult the longer you leave it. So the minute you find yourself doing this, just cancel, cancel and switch to an image that pleases you, something that changes your mind completely. As I said, use the cancel, cancel technique. So don't think too much. Don't scare yourself when bad thoughts come up. Sometimes we create something that wasn't even there in the first place. If you want an affirmation, I've used this in my life before. No matter what things going on, how terrible or how bad it is, 
I just close my eyes, I take a few breaths, and I just repeat over and over, I'm safe, I'm loved, all is well. I'm safe, I'm loved, all is well. But just get your mind off negative thinking, because chronic negative thinking creates more and more momentum. And that keeps us from loving ourselves because we keep thinking this is a disaster. This is, a, this is going to be a, a catastrophe. Okay. Number three, be gentle, be kind, and be patient with yourself. So patience is like really big deal here. I've just got this wonderful quote. I'm sure you've heard it before. Dear God, grant me patience, but I want it now. You know, in the world we live in today with technology, we are so accustomed to having an expectation for instant gratification that everything we want we want instantly we even want to learn instantly the truth is you can't learn much instantly you can learn some things instantly but not much so patience is a very powerful tool in our life and impatience I think about it here is resistance to learning because what I mean by that is when we're very impatient, it's like, just give me the lesson. I don't want to, I don't want to learn it. Just, just give me the answer. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we want the lesson without the necessary steps to learning. So be patient with yourself, no matter what shows up in your life. Sometimes we need to allow time to process things for things to unfold, for things to marinate, for things to teach us a lesson in them. So when we're really having a tough time, a good question to always ask is, what can I learn from this? And be patient with yourself and eager to learn. And then just remember that, sorry, impatience is, no, this is a mistake on the screen. Impatience is resistance to learning, not patience. Impatience, I should change that. Um, and we all make mistakes, it's okay. What we're trying to do is just learn. So in life, strive for progress, not perfectionism. As long as we're changing, growing and learning every day from any situation, we're doing well, we're doing really well. Get this thing about this ideal scenario one day when it's like this, it's perfect and I'll be happy then. Don't, don't, don't think about one day this perfect scenario. Every day, bit by bit, as long as you're making progress, becoming more self-aware and improving yourself patiently, you're doing well. Appreciate yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Many people talk about perfectionism as if it's a good quality or as if it's a, an accolade of some kind. I want to just make people aware that perfectionism is actually self-criticism at the highest level. We should never try to talk to our children and remind them that they're perfectionists or encourage them to have, if they call themselves, they say, yes, my child's a perfectionist. No, try to teach, especially children, that it's not about perfectionism. It's about progress. Because if we wait for something to be perfect, we just slow things down. We, we sometimes never even make a start. We don't want to hand something in or complete this project or this book we're writing or whatever it may be until it's perfect. I don't want to go and do a public talk until I'm perfect. I'm going to keep practicing. Let me tell you, preparation's overrated. The best thing to do is get out there and start and get practice and make mistakes and bump your head and fall down and get up and go again and learn. Bump your head, fall down and scratch your knees, get up and learn. That's the way to make progress in life. When we keep preparing, preparing, preparing to be perfect, we actually go the slowest. And we just keep reinforcing the self-criticism cycle. So I would say if you ever talk about yourself or others or your children or anyone that you know in your life about being a perfectionist, bring them up on it and tell them this is something you need to change or look at yourself in a different way. It's not about being perfect. It's just about becoming better day by day, making mistakes and accepting them as, as a good learning. Okay, number four. Learn to be kind to our minds. So we've spoken about negative thinking, chronic negative thinking. So now sometimes what happens is we have negative thoughts and then we really beat ourselves up again. Don't hate yourself for having negative thoughts. It happens to all of us. The statistic is 80% of our thoughts are negative. 
80%. And we have 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thoughts. So don't beat yourselves up. Stop all blame, all guilt, all punishment, and all pain. Let's just find things to do to help improve our minds and make them more positive, more peaceful, more harmonious, but let's not stick with beating ourselves up anymore. So I love you guys who are on this webinar because you all meditate, I know that. So meditate daily is really important for our minds. Relaxation is essential. And relaxation is also essential because when we're in a state of deep relaxation, our connection with source energy opens. And when that happens, we can then and only then feel true love and connection with an infinite source that loves us unconditionally. And if we open ourselves and focus and create an awareness and a consciousness of the unconditional love of source energy that created you and everything in this universe, it gives us a kind of inner strength to love ourselves too. Because if source loves us unconditionally, my goodness, unconditionally, unconditionally, no matter what we do, we could never disappoint. So that gives us strength and courage to say, you know what? I'm okay. I'm, I'm good enough. I can love myself too. It just gives us something that's almighty and all powerful that loves us that way. How we should focus on that rather than imperfect human beings who sometimes do love us conditionally, unfortunately, make us feel guilty from time to time, criticize us from time to time. Let's start with ourselves and our relationship in silence within, and that's in meditation. I've mentioned this affirmation. You can use it. I love myself. I forgive myself. I'm safe. I'm well. All these kind of affirmations, anyone, it doesn't have to be this, but something along these lines. Remind yourself, have an affirmation. Is It's so good and healthy as crazy as it sounds, it's really good and healthy to go and spend, I don't know, five minutes a day repeating in your mind, I love myself. I forgive myself for anything I've ever done that was a mistake, was no good. I forgive myself. I am safe. All is well. I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm a miracle of creation, whatever it may be. But boost yourself up at a sub deep subconscious level because your subconscious mind hears everything. The other thing is, Visualize optimistic outcomes always. So if you're going through a troubled time and you are a Silver Method graduate, you can use the mirror of the mind technique. The mirror of the mind, the final image on the white frame mirror is always the optimistic outcome. Live that, feel the emotion. If you haven't done the Silver Method and you're going through a tough time or you want different results or changes, visualize and the last image you leave in your mind the last one for as long as you can with the length of time is the positive image. Now, when we also think of people who we worried about who are sick or unwell in our lives, close your eyes and imagine them in your mind and send them. You can't do anything if someone is unwell. Let's be honest. What can we do? Especially if we're at a distance from them. So the best thing to do is close your eyes, go within, Send them healing energy, send them love, and always put the last image in your mind of them as one of perfect health and project that loving energy towards them. In the Silver Method, we do the healing techniques from the laboratory. So always have the final outcome for yourself and for others is perfect health. So when we think about our minds and our thoughts, you fight the feelings of doubt by visualizing success. Jose Silva used to say when anything popped in his head, they used to disturb him. He'd immediately go, close his eyes, take a few breaths in meditation and just keep visualizing the positive outcome. It's a really fantastic habit to create because it's saying to ourselves, I don't know how to cope with this. I'm really worried. Oops, change that thought. No more doubts. Go and change your mind about it. When you make that impression of visualizing the optimistic outcome, you make an impression in the subconscious mind. So you're basically continuously rewriting Positive neuro pathways, and how good is that? Because positive thoughts give positive outcomes. There's no other way. You can't get positive outcomes from negative thoughts. So really, very very helpful technique. Step five: acknowledge your efforts. This is really about self praise. People think it's a it's a bad thing. I'm saying no way, no way is it a bad thing. It's a good thing. 
when we criticize ourselves, we break ourselves down. We, we you know we break that spirit. You know, people talk about the spirit of, of an animal. You've seen dogs that have been badly abused and how they've got a timid spirit. And someone takes them in and looks after them and they start to get more and more confidence. You can see that dog really just starting to thrive. It'll be exactly the same. Criticism breaks our spirit too. And we start folding inwards and we have less confidence and we try to do less things that are challenging or new. When life is really about thriving, trying new things, making mistakes, that's okay, learning, but getting out there without fear. And the best way to get into that place of confidence is to praise yourself and build yourself up. The best praise that you can ever get is from yourself. Because if you don't believe you're any good, I don't really know how much someone else can convince you. We need to believe it. A good thing is to acknowledge who you are and whose you are. What I mean by that is, who created you? Where did you come from? Think about the source that created you. And if you think about who you are in that regard and whose you are, well, you're a miraculous creation, a wonderful creation. Affirmations, I would just suggest everyone every day has affirmations, whether you're driving, waiting in a queue, sitting, standing in a place to pay the checkouts in a supermarket, I don't know, waiting in your car, waiting in an elevator. Whenever you're doing nothing and you're having time to pass, send affirmations to your mind. They really do change a lot without you even realizing. They do a lot more than what we can ever imagine. I love this. Just, I love myself. I believe in myself. I'm worthy and deserving of all the good in my life. Do something along those lines. But tell yourself on a daily basis that you love yourself. Why not? How do we get there without telling ourselves? We can't really get there without repeatedly telling ourselves. If you think you can, then this lesson tonight is to say, well, it's going to be really quite challenging to get to a place of more self-love if you don't actually say it to yourself in the very specific words, I love myself. And say, I believe in myself. And I'm worthy. And you are worthy. You are worthy. You are deserving of all wonderful things in your life. Absolutely you are. Why not? If you can't tell yourself this comfortably, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So if you did say this and you felt a bit of, mm, mm, sounds, feels a bit weird, that's an awareness that even more so you need to be saying this to yourself and repeat it so often that you start to feel it and then it comes naturally and you don't feel it's really a weird thing to do because then it's a truth. If it feels uncomfortable, it means there's dissonance. Your conscious mind is saying the affirmation. Your subconscious mind says, what? I love myself. Are you kidding me? I believe in myself. What? I'm worthy and deserving? Huh. That dissonance is going to give you that uneasy feeling. So you've got to keep saying this to yourself out loud in your mind repeatedly until it becomes you and keep reinforcing it more and more. I promise you, it'll change your self-esteem. It'll change your confidence. And with this, you slowly remove those barriers in the road of your life that send all the prosperity, love, money, happiness, inner peace flowing towards you. That guilt, that criticism, that fear, that resentment. If you can say, I love myself comfortably, you raise and elevate yourself above those barriers and kind of can catapult yourself forward in your life. So always praise yourself. Don't make yourself wrong. Even if you've done something that's not perfect, don't make yourself wrong. Ask yourself, what can you learn? Build yourself up. Every opportunity you get, learn from it, build yourself up and tell yourself, I'm going to be better next time. And how did I expect to be perfect the first time I'm learning? But how good am I that I gave it a shot? I praise myself, pat myself on the back, I gave it a shot. It wasn't exactly the outcome I wished it to be, but next time I'll be better than I was this time. So praise yourself and build yourself up. My question is, what are you willing to do to fulfill, your, to fulfill yourself? Because we have to take steps and do different things it doesn't happen automatically, not from listening to this webinar. This isn't going to change it for you. You've got to take steps. So decide what it is going to be for you. Are you going to practice affirmations daily? Are you going to visualize 
and in a meditative state, love yourself, see yourself absolutely praising yourself, feeling on top of the world, appreciating yourself. Are you going to practice forgiveness? Is there someone or something in your life that needs forgiveness? That's a massive, massive, massive block. It needs to go. It's only holding a person back. It's, it's, never, it's never going to dissolve without intention and some action. So forgiveness is a lesson all on its own. But you can forgive. And there's so many meditations online for free or just repeating it over and over. I forgive myself and I forgive anyone else who's done anything to hurt me. And I forgive myself for any mistakes. Just repeat it over and over. It comes to you. And if you're a silver method person, you can do heaps of wonderful work in the laboratory with self-forgiveness. Um, what else do you need? Do you need treatments for anything to make yourself healthier? What do you need? Use the cancel-cancel technique. Keep using that to get more and more positive thoughts. Meditate more often. Use mind control. Get a disciplined mind. So that the more disciplined it is, the more you can control negative thoughts. You know, just to tell you about this, praise yourself, don't make yourself wrong. I remember the, I'm also selling investment property as a, another business. The very first time I had to go and give a presentation on my own, and I had this big fat document with a whole lot of statistics and things to go through. And I was so bloody nervous. And I went in, I did the presentation. Now, I could have looked at it in any two ways. I could have thought, well, that wasn't the best thing you ever did. Jeez, man, you should have practiced more and beat myself up. Or you can say what you said to yourself, Janine, you were fantastic considering this was your very first attempt. By the time you do this for the sixth time, you're going to be an absolute pro. Imagine how good you're going to be then and 10 times later. So how you talk to yourself every time you do anything is very, very important. Don't beat yourself up. Find the good that you've done. Even if it's not perfect, find the, the good in that you gave it a shot. You went out there and you tried. Excellent. So you made a mistake. Now you know what you need to improve on. You've got the awareness now. Find every positive thing in everything that happens, even if it didn't work out the way you want it to be. Okay, step six. Loving yourself means supporting yourself. I'm going to put the first thing up and say is to ask for help. Asking for help is loving ourselves. When we're too self-reliant and we always want to look after ourselves and we don't want anyone to help us, I have to tell you that it's coming from the ego. And the ego says, oh, I can, I can, I can do it all. And that's really the opposite of humility. And we do need to have a humble heart to learn. You can't learn if you've got to do if you If you're also self-reliant, there's not much space left for learning because learning requires humility. Otherwise, the opposite of humility is arrogance. I'm not saying you're arrogant if you are very self-reliant, but asking for help is also teaching yourself to receive. If you want more love, if you want more prosperity, you want better health, you want um, whatever abundance in your life to flow in, you have to become a person who conditions themselves repeatedly to receive. You want to open that same energy flow of receiving, and that even comes from asking for help. It's, it comes from the very same place. So teach yourself and learn to receive. Tell yourself you deserve it. You deserve help. You deserve whatever it is. And also give the other person or other people the gift or the, excuse me, the opportunity to add value to you. The same way we love to add value to others and help them if they ask us, we give a person a gift, an opportunity to add value to us. It makes their day. Giving is a wonderful feeling of giving love, makes you feel great. Give someone else an opportunity to do the same for you. Loving yourself also means supporting yourself by surrounding yourself with people who can support you. So I'd say if there's any area that you want to be better in, go to a support group. If you want to be a better speaker, join Toastmasters. If you want to be a better anything, there are support groups for anything. Also network. Network gets you going. It gets you at the house. It gets you trying new things. It opens you up. It gets you to share ideas with different people. You may meet some person and start working on a common goal. When you work on a common goal with someone, you grow beyond yourself. You become larger than just yourself. So the truth is, when we look around for people, everyone in our life can teach us something and can help and add value to us. 
So when we get into group support of some kind, we really do grow exponentially faster than what we do on our own. I love these quotes. Be strong enough to stand alone, smart enough to know when you need help, and brave enough to ask for it. So uh, it's not a weak person who asks for help. It's a courageous person who asks for help. And ask for help not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And lastly, humble people ask for help. If you think about this term, humble people ask for help, that's like prayer. People don't pray to God for help if they know everything. So humility is not only asking God or source energy for help, it's asking other people as well. So I'm saying even on that level of prayer, even God's help cannot flow into your life if your ego is too big thinking that you can do everything yourself. Humble minds are open to the power of the universe stepping in to give you those miracles. So try it. If you're not a person who's used to asking for help, start practicing and asking for help. Start tomorrow. Okay, step number seven. Love your negatives. Punishing yourself is a habit pattern. It's a habit pattern of the mind. So anything that's wrong with us or any negative things, when we punish ourselves and beat ourselves up, please know it's just a habit pattern. This is something we can change. Little good can flow into your life if we repeat negative statements about our lives. If we say anything along these lines, and they all cancel cancels, I'll say them ahead. I hate my job, or I hate my house, or I hate my illness, or I hate this relationship, or I hate this, or I hate that. Whatever you're saying that you don't like in your life, all of these statements are just an absolute block, just a block right away for any good flowing into our life. So whatever's negative in your life, somehow, some way, you've got to learn to appreciate that thing, even if it's that you're going to appreciate and love the learning it's giving you, the fact that it's teaching you something, whatever it may be, and find the ways and means if you can change it. If it's another person, forget about trying to change it. We're not here to try to change people. We're here to love and accept people as they are. I'll come to that a bit later in the presentation as well. Also, learning to say no. If you can't say no, when people want this from you, want that from you, want this from you, want from that, everyone's got demands on you. If you can't say no, your body will do it for you. That's when people get sick. Because then you're sick and, sorry, I can't do it today. I'm not well. I can't come to work today. I'm sick in bed. I, I can't do anything for the next so many months. I've got cancer. Cancel, cancel. Your body will say no for you unless you can love yourself enough to say no when something is not right for you. If something doesn't feel right, say no. If something is not what you want to do, say no. Do not feel guilty. We only feel guilty in saying no when we do not have enough self-love. So all this that we've shared in the previous steps has to be practiced, integrated. We've got to take steps and action and change. It won't happen automatically. And all these things that we potentially don't like in our lives, love everything. It's either a blessing or it's a teacher. Find the blessing in everything in life. Practice gratitude. It will lift you up and rise you above a bad situation. I know this sounds crazy for some people. And when I tell people this, they sometimes look at me like I've got 10 heads. But even my biggest loss in my life of losing my younger brother was a blessing in disguise because it shook me into a reality of saying, what are you doing with your life, Shanine? What if you die tomorrow? It got me onto a new path. It made me go through the toughest time of my life. I had to face all my fears of stepping out of a secure corporate job and having to work on how to live my dream. Otherwise, I was going to be in a corporate job until the day I couldn't work anymore, regretting never trying to live my dream. That would have been a worse fate. Imagine on your deathbed having regrets for never trying to live the thing that you dream, that you're passionate about. So I find the, the loss of my brother a blessing in disguise. I didn't see it at the time, but now in hindsight, the way my life has changed, I can see that blessing. 
So anything that you dislike in your life right now is trying to teach you something. Because if you can't change it, you're meant to learn from it. So it's how we look at everything. I like this. She's at a place in her life where peace is her priority and negativity cannot exist. We have to start changing our minds about our peace, love, and happiness. And it's got to be something we honor and put first. And when we do that, we're not being selfish. We're not being egocentric. We're being appropriately caring about us first. And when we do that, we're better for everyone else in our life. When we don't put ourselves first and we put ourselves last continuously, all it does over time is build resentment. I never had the chance to do this. I never had the chance to do that. And that's not a, and that's not a breeding ground for more love. And resentment's not a breeding ground for more prosperity. So loving and honoring ourselves first, and, and like this quote says, she's at a place in her life where peace is her priority. Inner peace. Doing what feels right for you. It's a healthy self-love. Okay, step eight. Take care of your body. Think of your body as this beautiful, magnificent, gorgeous house in which you're going to live for this short period on earth. If you see it as that, Surely you need to look after it because it's the only place you're going to live. It's the only place that you're going to get around in. So let's look after our bodies. Drugs, alcohol, junk food, overeating, not getting enough rest, not getting enough sleep, not getting enough exercise. I speak for myself here. Yeah, I could do better on that myself. Taking care of our body is really an important thing. And it's, it's a physical outward demonstration that I do care about myself that I do love myself and I want to look after this wonderful vehicle that's carrying me around. Um, also, I've got here drugs, junk food and alcohol. They often say to us, like, come and play for me for a while and we're going to have a good time. So we think, oh, I'm just going to get a bit of relief from the stress or from this tough time and just indulge, overeat drink too much alcohol, whatever it may be. And it's true, for a while it does give you a good time. But then the damage sets in, we pay the price at the end, we feel worse the next day, we feel worse after a week, whatever it may be, which just doesn't do anything for us, makes us feel worse at the end of it all. But we use them, whenever we do things like this and don't look after our body, we use it actually to hide our feelings. That's the only reason that people indulge in drugs, alcohol, food, overeating, to hide feelings that we have at the time and they often, not always, but they're often feelings of not being good enough ourselves. But what happens is when these things wear off and we kind of sober up and realize what we've been doing, we then feel guilty for what we've done. And we then feel worse. So we need to feel our feelings and let them pass through us. Sit with our feelings. I don't know where, someone was talking to me the other day saying, where were we conditioned not to feel? Because every time we feel really sad or really unhappy, we want to change something. I don't want to think about it. I want to go out and have a good time with a friend. Let me pick up a book. Let me watch TV. We don't want to think about these feelings. And we do everything else to distract ourselves. Where did we learn this? It's, it's not correct. Because when we want to mask or hide feelings, even sad and unhappy feelings, we're not allowing ourselves to process them. And... That's not really healthy because it, it ends up in some, some other form or fashion. So even anger is like a fear of not dealing with these f feelings. We're angry because we don't want the person to leave us. or we're angry because we don't want the person to treat us this way. Let's deal with the feelings, deal with the situation. It's healthier. So let's work through them. Okay, so that's all about taking care of our body. So let's take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. I like that. Okay, step nine. This is mirror work. So for the silver graduates, this is not mirror of the mind. This is actual mirror in your bathroom, in your bedroom, wherever your mirror is. This is a, might be strange for some of you. Maybe you've read this in a book before and someone's told you this in a workshop before or something. But this is true, truly a helpful exercise to do. You stand and look into a mirror. You look into your own beautiful eyes. And you say to yourself, I love you. 
And as I said earlier, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, there's dissonance on what you believe about yourself and what you're doing right now. And the more you practice this, the more you'll bring these things into alignment. And that's how you start to love yourself. And it's very important to stand and look in the mirror, staring in your very own eyes and saying to you, I love you. It's very powerful. There's all kinds of things going on. There's neural pathways, there's mirror neurons. There's looking at the image in your mind of yourself, saying to yourself, I love you. This is very, very powerful. So say, I love you. Maybe every day when you go to brush your teeth, look in the mirror and say, I love you. What can I do for you today? How can I make you happy? And listen to see if an answer comes up for you, whatever shows up. See if there's any inner voice there. If anything goes wrong in your life or something unpleasant happens, just look in the mirror, leave where you are, go there when something's going wrong and just say, you know what, this has happened, but I love you anyway. Always go back to that. No matter how bad you feel or something's gone wrong, go back to the mirror, look at yourself and say, I love you anyway. If you've done something well or things worked out for you on that day, go into the mirror and say to yourself, thank you. I love you. Awesome. I really thank you. If you've got anything to do with resentment or forgiveness, look in the mirror. The first person to forgive is yourself. Even if you need to forgive yourself for being angry with that person and not forgiving them for 20 years, whatever it may be, start with yourself and look in the mirror. Say to yourself, I forgive you. The truth is when we don't forgive, we won't let go. And then we bind ourselves to the past of whatever that thing was that we don't forgive. And all I can say is past garbage, if it's not released, creates future garbage. So anything that you need to forgive, forgive and clear that out so new beautiful energy can flow into your life. And say affirmations to yourself like, I now deserve all good. I allow all good experiences to fill my life. Whatever it is, tell yourself you're worthy. Tell yourself you're deserving. Tell yourself you allow. You allow yourself to have more love. You allow yourself to earn more money, whatever it may be. If you're struggling with anyone in a relationship, let's just say, as an example, this one is, let's say it's your mother. Let's say I'm having a, a struggle with my mother we have a tough relationship and we're always arguing or fighting. This is something you can do. You can look in the mirror, look in your own eyes and say, I have a wonderful, loving, warm, open communication with every member of my family, including my mother. And every time my mother pops into my mind, I'm, I learn that affirmation off my heart and I just say that. I have a wonderful, loving, warm, open communication with every member of my family, including my mother. You repeat this over and over. I absolutely guarantee you, if you did this, your relationship with whoever the person is will change. It will change for the better. Every time you tell yourself this, you're programming yourself, you're conditioning yourself, and it becomes your truth over time that you have a wonderful, loving relationship with everyone, including that person. And trust me, if that person doesn't change at all, they will drift from you. You'll have a different energy because when you create this as a new truth for yourself, you change and you change your vibration. You change your energy. You change whatever level you are at. And everything in your life is a vibrational match. So if you become different inside, you'll attract, and I'm saying more loving in that regard, you'll attract more loving into your life. It will never be where it is right now. And then last, step 10. Love yourself now. Please don't wait. Right now, tonight, today. Love and approve yourself right now. Just be aware, dissatisfaction with yourself at any level is just a habit pattern of the mind. It's not a reality. It's just a thought that's been processed repeatedly. It can change with repeated new thoughts. This is quite important. We can't change people. Don't even try. It's not our job. Accept people. Just love and accept people as they are. You know, we can't change people, so we often spend a lot of time and energy trying to make other people different. If we used only half that energy on ourselves to make ourselves better and ourselves different, 
we would get so far forward. And then when we do change working on ourselves and we are different, what happens is others respond to us differently, as I just explained. So let's give up trying to change people. You also can't learn life for another person. Everyone has to learn his or her particular lesson, his or her own way. If you try to interfere with that, all you do is sabotage their journey. You actually sabotage their personal growth. No matter how slow it is, it's their journey. All you can do is love yourself. Loving yourself is the very first step. Forget about trying to um, teach someone a life lesson or make them change. Here's a quote. If you can't, um, it says, you can't change people, so either you accept who they are as they are or start living life without them because living with a condition that they should change is crazy and it's not our job. It's not our job. So either we need to learn something about ourselves, that we love ourselves, love others unconditionally, accept them as they are, or, or think about living life without them because living with them and wanting them to change continuously is not happy. So if you love yourself, you won't be brought down by other people's behavior. If you're in a situation with really negative people who don't ever, ever change, you need to love yourself enough to know that maybe you need to move away from a situation like that if it doesn't change. But being in a bad situation or an abusive relationship is really just saying to ourselves, I'm not worth loving, so I'm going to stay here. I'm going to accept this behavior because I must deserve it. And I'm sure nobody else wants me. No, that's not true. When we love ourselves and honor ourselves, we change. And people respond to us depending on how we are. So let's focus on loving ourselves. Whenever you get this thought in your head that someone else should change, just go back and think, I need to learn to love myself more. And when you do that, everything will work out correctly. How you behave is going to work things out correctly. You know, and just depends. I was reading in this book of Louise Hay of a person at a seminar who had this abusive husband and he wouldn't change. And she changed and loved herself and she just stayed on her own path. If, if, the, if you're not a vibrational match, the right thing will work out. So he left, for example, or whatever it may be. Or we need to honor ourselves to leave. Or in loving ourselves, people respond and love us more. So whatever it is, the only focus is to be on ourselves. The quickest way to change any problem is to love who we are. And it's amazing how the love vibrations that we send out attract, us, to, attract to us people who are more loving towards us. So unconditional love is the goal and it all begins with self-acceptance and self-love. If we really love ourselves, everything in our life is going to work out. We are not here to please others and live this life of sacrifice, putting ourselves last. I don't know if anyone ever got that idea. It's not, it's not right. Even the Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. It commands you to love yourself. Because when we love ourselves and honor ourselves, we do the same for others. You cannot give away what you do not have. So here's some closing words by Louise Hay. It says, you are not here to please other people or to live your lives their way. You can only live it your own way. You have come to fulfill yourself and express love on the deepest level. You are here to learn and grow and to absorb and project compassion and understanding. When you leave the planet, you don't take your relationship or your car or your bank account or your job, your job with you. The only thing you take is your capacity to love. And it all starts with yourself. I love that. It helps to put focus on the right way for us to move in the right direction, to have anything work out in our lives. It all starts with ourselves. So here's just a quick summary of the 10 steps. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop scaring yourself by making mountains out of molehills, dramatizing. Be gentle, kind, and patient with yourself. Learn to be kind to our minds. Let's meditate. Use cancel, cancel. Don't beat yourself up for negative thoughts. Acknowledge your efforts. Praise yourself. Support yourself. Ask for help. Love your negatives. Learn from your mistakes. Take care of your body. Look in the mirror, all that mirror work. Tell yourself you love yourself, you honor yourself, you're beautiful, whatever it may be. And start to love yourself right now.
Lastly, worry about loving yourself instead of loving the idea of other people loving you. That's powerful. Because when we love the idea of other people, you know, approving of us, loving of us, accepting us, all you're doing is denying yourself. You're trying to be what you're not. You're trying to be this person to please other people. Don't do that. Just love yourself. People either get on the bus or they go to another destination. It's okay. Let them get on their bus wherever they're going. If you love yourself and people get on your bus, they're the right people to be on the journey with you. If they don't get on your bus, they weren't meant to be on the journey with you. And that's good because you don't want the wrong people on the journey with you. So don't try and please other people. Just think about accepting yourself unconditionally, loving yourself unconditionally, and the same will flow out into your other relationships. So the lesson is always to love yourself. And here's a couple of quotes. It says, if you want to soar in life, you must first learn to fly. And that means you must first learn to love yourself. So if you want to really take off and, you know, reach the highest levels of your potential, the only way you can fulfill your potential and to soar in life is to start with loving yourself. And lastly, be yourself. Not for anyone else. Just be yourself. That's when you're the best. Just as you are. Accept yourself. Value yourself. Definitely forgive yourself of anything and everything you've ever done that you think was wrong. Bless yourself, express yourself, trust yourself, and love yourself. I love that. So I don't know if there are any questions at this point. Otherwise, we're going to move into a guided meditation. So if anyone wants to say anything or ask any questions or unmute your lines, you can ask me anything. Now's the time. Yes or no? Say no. Yes. No. Thanks, Jim. At least I got one nod there. <laughs> All good. All really good. good. Thank Thanks, you. Shane. Okay. All right. Well, if you want any comments, you're welcome to feed them at the end if there's still something for you. Otherwise, let's quickly do the guided meditation to reset our body and mind for the month. Think about what you want to focus on for the month ahead. I'm going to ask you that question. And I'm going to do a special countdown where you're going to tune into your higher self to get inspiration and some answers from a place deep within. Where's your highest truth? It'll just take about 15 minutes and have a pen and paper ready. Keep it on your lap in a comfortable position so you can write the answers down when I ask them so you don't come fully out of meditation. I want you to stay in a deep meditative state. And just lightly open your eyes and write the answers down. And maybe you just want to write on your paper um, like a marker for every different question so you know which one it was. So let's just get into a comfortable position. Um, take a breath, just relax, and I'm going to start this meditation music. And just remember when you get any answers at the end, because I asked the question at the end, don't judge them. There's no right, there's no wrong. Just write down the first thing that comes to mind and let that just be the answer that you're going to trust that comes from a place of higher wisdom for you. And I'm just going to put off the camera. So get into a comfortable position now. Take a nice, deep belly breath. And as you exhale, just allow all the tensions in your body to release and float away. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, just begin to feel your body relaxing. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, 
Feel the tension leaving your scalp. Feel the tension leaving your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your cheeks. Relax your tongue and jaw. Relax your neck. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, relax your shoulders, arms and hands. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your back. Relax from the top of your neck all the way down to the bottom of your spine. Relax your chest. Relax your stomach and your abdomen. Relax your pelvic area. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale, allow the tension to leave your hips and your thighs. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet all the way down to your toes. You are now experiencing a deep state of relaxation. Continue to breathe deeply, slowly and rhythmically. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed. Feel how relaxed you feel. Now, you're going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined, somewhere you've been or maybe somewhere that you'd like to go, but allow it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Begin to experience this place right now.
Now that you've created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. This light is a healing energy, a clearing energy. Your waterfall of white light is now created. Walk over to the waterfall and stand under the white healing light. Allow the white light to swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow. This white light is clearing the stress, tension and clutter of today. Feel it clearing the stress, tension, and clutter of all of last week. And all of last month. And all of last year. Feel it clearing the stress, tension, and clutter of the lifetime from your energy field or from your atmosphere or from your aura. As this light flows over you and clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. See how the weights that you've been carrying are no longer a burden. Notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. This waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this healing white light. Now take a deep breath, relax deeper, and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind that from now on, I will occasionally be speaking in your place. 
every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every cell, tissue, organ, and system of my body is revitalized, restored, and renewed, resulting in a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to promote maximum benefits. My awareness in using my mind allows me to do activities that promote increased health physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Now imagine the white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This light is pure unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It flows right through your entire being. It fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, all those pains you felt, the angry moments, allow this light, beautiful green light, this unconditional love to heal all those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve abundance. And you deserve peace. Feel that to be true for yourself right now. It is now time to step out of the waterfall. Step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clean and clear. You are centered and energized. You are able to think more clearly, focus more easily. You are in the flow. The flow of universal love and energy. Take a moment now to bask in this feeling of connectedness. You have now reset your body and mind for the month. It is now time to set your intention for the month of March. Tune in to your higher wisdom, your higher self, that part of you that if tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. I'm now going to count down from 10 to 1 and at the count of 1, you'll be tuned in to your higher self and inner wisdom. 10 Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You are now tuned in to your higher self and your inner wisdom 
that intuitively knows what is absolutely best for you. Feel the alignment with your higher self. Feel the connection. And now ask yourself the following questions. What do I need to focus on for the month of March? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. Don't judge it, just write it down. And then take a deep breath, keep your eyes closed and re-enter your calm state. So what do I need to focus on for the month of March? Next question, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? The next question, what do I need to let go of? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. Then take a deep breath, close your eyes and re-enter your calm state. What do I need to let go of? And the last question, is there anything else I need to know? Is there anything else? Now allow a deep breath and as you exhale, relax. Slowly bring your attention back to your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you are ready, you can count yourself out from one to three. Open your eyes and have a big stretch. Lots of blessings to you. Okay, welcome back, everybody. How was that for all of you? Good? Anybody want to share some insights that they got or epiphanies? Don't all shout at once. No, I'll tell you the engineer. Oh, hold on, Jim. 
Uh, let me stop the sound. Yep. Did you want to say something? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I just got some nice ones for um, allowing flow and acceptance as against judgment. I crossed out the judgment being a negative. Um, and more looking forward to peace with awareness. And an important one for me is letting go of any anger and self-judgment. And on anything else, I just got you doing okay. Oh, good. Good. That was clear enough. Well, it Thank sounds you. like tonight's lesson would be helpful with self-judgment and releasing anger. Yeah, so go back and maybe reply, apply some of the techniques every day and just see how it slowly works for you. It will change. It will change you for sure. It has. Good. Anyone else want to share? Yes, no, maybe. No, it's good. Go ahead. Jane? Yeah, Marie. Yeah, it was good. It's just completely aligned with what I'm doing at the moment. Declutter. And <laughs> giving away stuff. <laughs> wow, that came up for you, did it? Yeah, so that's aligned with what I need to do. And so the let go, if let go of attachment, so that's 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 going with decluttering. Very good. You inspired me yesterday, by the way. I, I threw away a whole <laughs> lot of stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> I came home and applied your wisdom straight away. Um, <laughs> thank you. I, anything else, Marie? No, just yeah, and anything else I need to know, I just want to, I love you. So, wow, yeah. brilliant, that's great. Anybody else, Angela or Nancy, want to say something? No, yes, you're on mute, by the way. You want to say anything, Nancy? No, 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 I'm all good. You're all good, okay, and yeah. Angela, she's all good. Yeah. Okay. She got signed messages, so she has to work on herself. Who has? Bella? Yeah. It's good to get same messages because it means that it's definitely that. Now it's time to take action. Thank you. It's like a reinforcement. Okay, so just quickly. Next time, the Meaningful Monday is going to be on receiving prosperity, which really is a flow on of loving yourself, to be very honest, is all kind of work together, they hang together. Um, in terms of next events, I don't know, Jim and Angela, are you aware of Out of This World, this four-day retreat that's going on? It was on some of the newsletters and on Facebook and that, but if you're interested, I really would recommend, if you want, I can send you a link or something. I did send it out earlier. There's a four-day retreat at Q Station on the 21st, 1st and 24th of March. I'm hosting it with two other associates, but the main event is a guy from South Africa called Dr. Bruce Copley, and he's one of the only two holistic animators or holistic teachers in the world. And I've done four of his programs years ago, and he absolutely changed my life. It's very different to any course you've ever done. It's not a seminar or a lecture or, or taking notes or PowerPoint. It's just experiences, amazing experiences that just blow you away, to be honest. And in these experiences, we ignite the innate learner within us. There's a dormant, intuitive learner within. And it just starts to question maybe some of your perceptions, your paradigms have new epiphanies, and develop a deeper connection with all life. That's, that's what you'll definitely develop whilst you're there, a kind of reverence for all life and a deeper connection with yourself, others, the world at large. So that's out of this world. And there is a full money back guarantee. If the experience is, is not out of this world for you, you don't even want to know why. We'll give all your money back. So it's something very, very different. And if you want more info, um, just give me a thumbs up and I'll send you some links. Um, but we can't tell you too much of what the content is because there are experiences that are going to be out of this world, whether they're with music, with art, with nature, um, with yourself, with people, they're all different. With fire, 
Um, and then the Silver Method training, there's two classes coming up. 12th of April is, is a new one. And then I've also launched a program called Silver Kids. So if any of you know of any children between 8 and 12 years of age, this is a specific program for children to learn the tools and techniques that you learn in Silver Life Systems. So that's that. Um, more details are on the website. And then just a reminder that the four key skills to take charge of your life is coming up on the 15th of March at 7.30. Many of you may have seen this before. It's from the Silver Method. It's a tip of the iceberg, and it leads in people to the next program, as I said, on the 12th to the 15th. So if you know anyone who may need this more than you do, please share this with them and let people join in, share knowledge, share the love, let people know what are these four key skills. Whether they do silver or not is irrelevant. They'll get something out of the webinar. And certainly if they've got children who they're interested or potentially be interested in doing the Silver Method, Suggest that they listen to this lecture as well. It's also going to be joined by parents and perhaps some school involvement this particular night because I'm also going to be talking about Silver Kids on this webinar to some people who are attending. So that's really it from my side. Whoops. I'll leave it on this other screen, which is better. Is there any other questions for me? Shoot now. I'm ready. Or otherwise, say, Good night, and I'll say you, good night to you. God bless. Thank you for your time and attendance, and I hope you've got some value out of tonight. No, Janine, love you. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Marie. Night, Jay. Night, Thank man. you. Thank you. Night. Cheers, Bella. Good night. Sleep well. And night to Angela. Yeah, she's already gone. Ah.